Hello, Birdville Pre-AP teachers. Since the Pre-AP curriculum has been renovated, there are some implications for you in forethought. So first, I am talking today to any teacher who had a Pre-AP math, science, or social studies course last year and will continue teaching that same course this year. There are a few exceptions. Pre-AP 7th and 8th grade math, as well as all Pre-AP English courses, do not need to follow the instructions that are coming. So if you teach 7th or 8th grade Pre-AP math or any Pre-AP English, you can go ahead and hit stop. Everyone else going to talk to you about what this means for you in forethought. So a little bit of background. Since our Pre-AP courses have always shared the same scope and sequence as on level, there will no longer be a need to have two separate courses in forethought. Instead, what's happening is you will pull up a unit and see your standards, and each standard will have its standard clarification as well as the pre-AP standard clarification document. And that is the meat of our curriculum. It's in those standard clarification documents. So we are combining everything into one course to make it easier for you to use and to make it where more resources can get added for you. So you received some forethought beginning of year procedures. It looked like this. I'm going to talk you through these same steps. Um, the, it's describing how to edit your lesson planner schedule, and you'll be following the same basic steps as everyone else in the district, but there's just a few extra bits that you'll need to make sure that you account for. First of all, the old Pre-AP courses, so the courses you might have had in your planner last year, are going to be removed from the system. So you have to update your planner with the correct courses to continue to access curriculum. So again, you'll follow those steps on the beginning of your procedures document in addition to the steps I'll discuss with you today. In summation, we're basically removing the old Pre-AP courses from your schedule, from your lesson planner, and adding back just the regular version of those courses. For example, if you taught Pre-AP Algebra 1 last year, you'll remove that Pre-AP Algebra course from your planner and go and add back just plain old Algebra 1. Because we know that within Algebra 1 now, I'll have my on-level curriculum as well as my Pre-AP curriculum all within that same course. So I'm going to show you this in action. Here is my lesson planner with my Algebra 1 Pre-AP course. This looks just like it did for me all last year, but I'm ready to update it. So you'll go to Change My Settings at the bottom left, and then My Schedules. And you'll see your schedule from last year sitting there. If you have more than one schedule here, you'll want to click and remove. You only want one schedule. So I've clicked that and I'll say edit schedule. On the first screen, you get a chance to change the name. It really doesn't matter what name you give your schedule. It's only for you. Uh, most people feel comfortable putting the school year. So I'll go ahead and update my year and click next. So now I see the entries that I've had in my lesson planner, which I just had my Algebra 1 Pre-AP. So my first step is going to be to click this and remove it. I don't want that curriculum anymore. I know it's about to get deleted. I'm going to add an entry now. It's a course with learning standards. That's our courses that have curriculum. Click Next. And I'm going to go back, and instead of picking Pre-AP Algebra, I'm just picking Regular Algebra. On this screen, it does give you the opportunity to change this title. For instance, you might want to call it Pre-AP Algebra 1, or you could even call it First Period, however it is that you organize your planner. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep it at Algebra 1 so we don't get confused. You'll also see below this your Skyward roster sections. Depending on when you access this video, you, it may still be last year, it may be next year. Moral of the story, don't worry about checking things off on that list. The implications of um, the checking is a feature that is not very beneficial to you. So I encourage you to not even worry about your Skyward sections on your course entry screen. Go ahead and click Next. So now I have Algebra 1 in my planner. I'm ready to go. It's likely you have more than one course that you teach, so you would continue to add your entries 
until all the courses that you plan for are represented here. And then say next. It'll give you a chance to add or edit a schedule. You just say next. We only want one schedule. You're done. You have to click begin using forethought to save the work you just did. All right, so now I'm in my planner. First thing I notice is it still says Algebra 1 Pre-AP. I had already clicked on this date and it got stamped with the way my schedule was two minutes ago. I've now updated my schedule. You'll notice in my calendar I've been busy clicking on all kinds of future dates. So all of these dates got stamped with my old schedule that had pre-AP. So for today and then any days in the future I might have clicked just exploring, I will come up to my schedule menu and say delete today's plans and watch what happens. It's going to throw out this pre-AP lesson planner stamp and re-stamp it with Algebra 1 as it's currently represented in my settings over here. Each time I click on a date, whatever's in my settings gets stamped on that date. If I ever need to refresh it to a new stamp, I can come up here and say delete today's plans. Throw out the old, bring in the new. Alright, the next topic that will come into play here is copying lessons from last year to this year. So let's talk this out. We've got this new and improved pre-AP curriculum and it really will enhance your planning, but it's going to add a couple of extra steps when it comes to copying lessons. A little bit of background about the program and forethought, you can only copy lessons between light courses. So I can copy from Algebra 1 to Algebra 1, from English 1 to English 1, but I couldn't copy from Algebra to English. So we also can't copy from pre-AP Algebra to Algebra. The system doesn't allow this, but we do have a trick, and I will tell you, this is a trick that is beneficial in lots of ways, not just to help you copy, and the, the silver lining is you can be a step ahead of your friends in the district because you are about to be an expert of a feature called My Activities. So basically, let's say you found this pre-AP lesson from last year about factoring polynomials, it's beautiful, you want to teach it again. Usually to copy, we would hit this little icon that looks like two sheets of notebook paper right here, but I've got a big red circle on that because it's not going to work. We've, we're moving between two different courses now. Instead, you'll click this icon that looks like a gear with a little plus sign on it. When you click that, you will add this lesson to your My Activities tab. So let's see what that really means. You'll click your My Activities tab in your planner And you'll see any activities you've created at this point. It's probably just one, or you might have some things from last year. I've been very busy. So here's this activity that I've created from a lesson from last year. I did it just by pushing that activities icon. So I'm going to open it up, and now I can edit the name of my activity in that orange space. Instead of it being activity for Algebra 1, I might want to rename it something more meaningful, such as factoring polynomials. Okay. It is very likely that after studying your pre-AP standard clarifications, that you won't end up keeping lessons just the same as last year. You might be doing some redesign to more closely align to the rigor and context and those habits of mind that we're developing in our pre-AP AP students. So at this point, you might just reference last year's lesson and then come back to this year and type up a new one, or you might really want to copy it over. So to do that, we're using My Activities. You've saved it as an activity, and the next step involves filing your activity away in the curriculum for easy access. Basically, each activity you create is stored in the curriculum based upon the standard that's at the top of the blue box in that activity. So right now in our example, we've got this 10A standard that was pulled from the six, six weeks in Algebra 1. Okay. This is where I will find my little activity in the curriculum when I'm back in my lesson planner. Each instance of a standard is viewed by the program as a separate entity altogether. So if I have the same standard in several different units, the program sees them as completely different standards. 
Or if I have 10A in my pre-AP course and I also have 10A in my regular course, it's seeing that as two different things. So we have to pay attention to where we file things. So I got this activity from last year in, a, in the old version of this course. So the first thing I need to do is change which course this activity is filed under. So I'll come up here to change associated course and you have to actually pick another course and dig in the tree to go find that again. So this time I'm picking just Algebra 1 so it will be in the course I've got in my planner now. And then I'm going to go back to the unit that I plan to teach this lesson in and I can click in that standard. So at this point, if I go back to my lesson planner, when I pull up this unit and click on 10A, I would have access to this lesson in my resources box. You also have the power to control your filing system based on your preferences. I know for me, it just makes logical sense in my brain that things I create would be stored under my unit documents under resources especially in the humanities where it's not always perfectly clear which standard would be at the top of your list uh, it might be wise to choose a different place to file the lessons the activities that you're creating so watch this I can double click in this resources okay? and we remember it's filed based on what's at the top of your list so I can right click on resources and say set as primary learning standard that moves it to the top of the list and effectively refile this whole activity to this spot in the curriculum. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So what I've done, I was in my lesson planner. I clicked to add my lesson from last year to my activities, went to my activities tab, changed the name, change the course that this activity was filed in and I put in the standard or the unit uh, resources based on where I wanted to be able to find this activity again when I go back to my planner. So we're now ready to go back to the planner and see how to add this in. So the first thing I will do is switch back to my planner tab Okay, I want this lesson from last year that I've now turned into an activity and I want to add it to this date in my planner. So I'm going to go back to that unit and remember I had put the unit resources at the top of my list so now when I click resources look at that I have my factoring polynomials my activity sitting there waiting for me. So I can double click to open this activity and then I can say use in plans. Okay, and there we go. This activity has now been added to my plans for this day including the standards. Now in forethought it never overwrites anything so when I copy anything in any way it will repeat this set of procedures accommodations notes I can highlight hit backspace get that all back to ship shape pretty fast so I've just taken a lesson from last year moved it to this year all right now I'm going to show you those steps really succinctly again so that you can see without me stopping to explain everything um, so I have found a lesson from last year I've decided that I want to move it to this year in my planner. So here's what I'm going to do. Click the Add to My Activities button. Say OK. Switch to My Activities tab. You won't have this as many as I do. I'm going to rename it something meaningful. I'm going to say Change Associated Course, Another Course dig down and find it in my course tree. 
Then I'm going to put the standards back in and decide do I want to file it there in my lesson planner or do I want to file it somewhere else? If so, I can use my right click set as primary learning standard to move where I want it filed to the top of my list. Hit save. Go back to my planner. I'm refreshing tomorrow with my current schedule. You wouldn't really have to do that. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to click back on that resources where I saved my activity. Double click it and say use in plans. Okay. Delete the extra bits or don't even worry about the extra bits. They will not change the effectiveness of your lesson. I'm going to hit save if the system hasn't already saved it and I'm done. So that did take longer than standard copying, but here's what's awesome. Next year, you won't have to think back, ooh, did I teach factoring polynomials on September 12th or was it like October 14th? You're probably going to forget dates. But now that you're turning things into activities, they will stay put in your curriculum year after year for you to find and use in your plans without having to go back and look on past dates. All right, use these instructions, do a little bit of practicing, contact me, Kristen Cavaness, if you need to talk anything out, or if you have any questions, we want to help support you in this transition, and remember that we now have our Pre-AP Standard Clarification Documents that are really going to help us prepare these kiddos for success. Thank you so much.